Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and welcome to the show, y'all. This show is about a peon that got the ups on folks, G-Money, right? Now, let me tell you something. Independent attention, most of the time, ain't no peon, man, getting no ups on no brother, right? But this brother here, Mississippi, right, he told me this story years ago, right? And I just ran into him again. He back on the violation. So he dropping a little dime on me, let me know what was going on with him. And he reminded me of when he got the ups on G-Money, right, and how all that played out. So I decided I'm going to tell this story so everybody know that every now and then the peon do come out on top when they're dealing with somebody affiliated, right? It ain't always where they get crushed, right? It's a rare thing, but it does happen, right? And check this out. Mississippi, he came to Tennessee when he was young, him and his mama, right? He got him a job. Well, she got a job in Nashville working, right? So he would hang out with the guys because he's a teenager when he got here. So he'd be hanging out with different people in, he'd met in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? He living in the projects, him and his mom. So he hanging out with different guys. And he ended up getting caught up on some cases, right? Dope cases, dope cases, selling, you know what I'm saying, all kinds of pills and stuff like that, right? And one of the cases was a second-degree murder charge, right? So he ended up in a penitentiary. He had about 18-year sentence that he had to do because they ran everything concurrent with the dope charges, right? So he came out, quote-unquote, good on that level, right, if it's a, such a thing. Let me put it that way because I don't ever want to say that uh, – the lifestyle. It's anything good about it. Ain't nothing good about it, y'all. Just keep that in mind, right? But anyway, he ended up in the penitentiary. And when he got here, he ended up in the cell with one of the guys, G-Money, right? Now, he's in the cell with G-Money, and G-Money is shaking the spot. He's doing any and everything to get his bread. He got him a phone. He's talking on the phone. This and then the third, right? But let me tell you something. If a peon is in the cell with one of the guys, if something goes wrong in that cell, that peon got to wear that. They got to take all charges. That's just what it is. Anybody tell you anything else, they lying to you. You got a peon in the cell, something go wrong, that's theirs. Even though they may or may not be able to use it. But in this situation, Mississippi, he was able to use the phone and and and, and G-Money would break him off with a little money, you know what I'm saying, every now and then, a little dope rather, where he can go get him some money and all that kind of stuff so he can keep his own shelf straight, right? You know what I'm saying? So here's the thing. After a little while, G-Money started to push a little bit harder. You know what I'm saying? He's starting to want uh, 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 Mississippi to uh, wash his clothes. You know what I'm saying? And because Mississippi washed his own clothes by hand, he didn't like sending his stuff out to the laundry because the stuff came back dirty. So he would wash his own stuff. So after a while, G-Money notices that he said, bro, will you wash my clothes? At first, Mississippi looked at him. He said, man, nah, I ain't with none of that, right? But he's thought about it. If I don't do this, then he going to start messing with me about using the phone. He gonna start messing with me by not breaking me off a little dope because he wasn't even having to pay for the dope. He wasn't even having to pay to use the phone or any of that kind of stuff. So he had a little bit of fringe benefits. You feel what I'm saying? So he was like, yeah, he said, I'll wash all your stuff, but I don't wash no man's drawers. You feel what I'm saying? So bro was like, that's cool. I understand that. You feel what I'm saying? So he, uh, Mississippi washed his t-shirts, his socks, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and his state clothes and stuff like that, right? Keeping that kind of stuff clean, but he wouldn't do his underwear. And that's, and that's, respectable. You feel me? And he didn't charge G-Money to do it. So here's the thing. Now it's like he cleaning the cell, he washing the clothes, and then when, when G-Money gal called or, or G-Money called his gal, he wanted him out the cell, except for at night he got to be in the cell. At night it's lockdown time. He can't not be in the cell. You feel me? But he started to feel like, you know, G-Money pushing him too much. Because after you've been in prison for a while and you start to get comfortable, you start to try to search your own lane to where you want to be. And you don't want to be known as somebody's do boy or you don't want to be known as G Money Selly. You see what I'm saying? He wanted to be known as Mississippi. Mississippi standing on his own and he holding his own. Right. But he couldn't do that under that shadow. Right. So it caused him to have a lot of envy, a lot of uh, uh, anger towards G Money because he wanted to tell him, look here, bro, you know what I'm saying? You need to clean the cell, and I clean the cell too. You feel what I'm saying? He wanted to tell him different things like that, but he, he couldn't do it because he, he felt like, you know, G-Money the folks. 
and he understand the business. He's seen it go down in the penitentiary, so he accepted a lot of that, but it had him made him build up a lot of resentment towards G Money. So let me tell you what happened. G Money ended up going to the hole. And while G Money in the hole, he tell Mississippi, look, call my gal and tell her, you know what I'm saying, what happened, and I'll be out of the hole, this, that, and the third. And he said, put the phone up and don't be using it, man, unless you have to, he said, because they'll probably come back and shake down. Now, I know y'all heard this before. You know what I'm saying? Somebody go to the hole, they got a phone, and then they try to come up with the gal. But this is a little different. This story is a little different, how it played out, right? Because let me, let me explain it to you. This is what Mississippi did. When well, Mississippi called folks gal and told her that he was locked up and in the hole, he went a step further, and he told her, look here, you need to change all your numbers. Change all your numbers and get off of his visitation list because he's under investigation. And if he's under investigation, then you're not going to be able to come and see him. You're not going to be able to talk to him on the phone. None of these types of things, right? until they get it cleared up. And you don't want your name coming up in none. But if you go on and get off of his list, they'll look at it like, well, it ain't her. They just broke up. He painting a good picture and she's, she's biting because she's listening to him. It's like, why would he tell me something that's not true? He know that my man will hurt him. That's what she's thinking. You feel what I'm saying? So she do it. She changed the number. And he tell her, to give me the number and I'm going to give it to him. And then don't write him. Because G Money had told Mississippi to tell her to write it, right? You know, just get a letter from his gal right in the hole. You know what I'm saying? Pass the time. But Mississippi told her, don't write him. You write it to me, and then I get it to him. That way, everything stay copacetic. You don't want your name coming up in this investigation. So she do all that. Now, Mississippi, he sent word over to G Money in the hole and tell G Money, look, Gal says she done. She done with you. So he clocking out. He clocking out. So now when he pen an investigation, anything that you, any letter that you write, because they let you get stamps sometimes. And they'll let you have a Bible sometimes, right? So he decides to write her a letter, but he understands this is uh, G Money. He understands, though, I can't mail it out because they're going to be reading it all this and that, right? And he got some things he need to tell. So he get, he writes the letter and he gets it smuggled out of the hole and gets it to Mississippi. Now, he don't know Mississippi done hit him in the head and crossed him, right? So Mississippi gets the letter and he reads the letter. And the letter is like, baby, what you doing? What, what's going on? Are you leaving me? I need you now. I need you to do this. I need you to do that and all this and that. Mississippi is sucking it all up. So then he write Gal and he tell Gal, look, this is what you need to do. G Money telling me that you need to call out here and tell these folks the business on this, that, and the third and put it off on somebody else as if they done tried to set G Money up, right? But Mississippi tell her, don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing to help him. Because right now, you know, it has to play itself out. Don't put yourself in it. So now G Money's starting to think she done jump ship on him. He been in the hole for a minute. Now he wondering why he ain't got out. Because you go the whole pen and investigation for seven days at a time, right? Now he on his second seven days, right? And at the end of that, it'll be 14. They can extend it one more time. So when he get to the 14th day, they extend it again. He's under investigation. Now he's wondering what's going on. Now all of a sudden, he don't know what he not understanding. Mississippi done dropped the kite to the warden. Now, this kite that he done dropped to the warden is letting the warden know anonymously that G Money's life is in danger, that he owe a lot of vice lords some money and dope. Now, listen to me. When the warden them hear stuff like that, they got to act on it. And because Mississippi had been locked up just for a little while and been in the mix, he know how this goes. So now he manipulating how the business go. So now, don't nobody really know what's going on but Mississippi. G-Money don't get out of the hole. So G-Money tell folks them to bump down on Mississippi and tell Mississippi that he need to send that phone over there so he can take care of his own business. And folks them got a way to take care of to get it over there. 
But let me tell y'all something about how stuff works like it. When you affiliated, if you ain't that top, top dog, if you ain't the top, top one, then I'm talking about the top POAs, right? Most of the time, you ain't finna get uh, treated the same way. So when, when Brunnell bumped down on Mississippi and talking about, let me get that phone, this, this, and that, Mississippi, no. They not finna send that phone over there, man. They not finna do that. They not finna do that at all. They finna keep that. Because G Money, even though he's in good standing, he just an OSM. He ain't got no power. He ain't got no thought. He ain't got no rank. So Mississippi tell him, he said, man, the phone got popped the night he went to the home. So they like, huh? Wait a minute. For real? He was like, yeah, they came back and shook down and found that phone in his property. They found the phone in the property. So they, they hollered Mississippi. Like, How come they didn't write you up? Because it was they found it in his property. It wasn't with mine. When you, know, like, when you go to the whole pen investigation, you, they take you to the hole right then, but then they come back. The officer or the pilot come back or to be the, the, the search team or whoever it is that took you to the hole or some officers that work the yard, they'll come back and pack up all of your belongings, right? And then they'll take it to, to the property room and hold it until the conclusion of the investigation. So when they packed up all the G-Money stuff, Mississippi is standing outside the cell, right? Now, you got everybody watching them pack up all of this stuff, but don't nobody know what's going on. But see, Mississippi, understanding the game, how it goes, he put the story out there that they got the phone. Now, everybody, look, it's one thing about the penitentiary. Penitentiary, they, people in penitentiary ain't got nothing to do. They bored. So they'll repeat a lie as if it's true without thinking about it. So once he put that story out there that the phone got pumped, everybody believed it. Because why? Because they came back and they packed the stuff up. And Mississippi telling them that uh, 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 G Money had the phone in the property and the phone got pumped. Everybody believe that because that happens. It happens. So now, Brendan sent word over to G Money in the hole and tell G Money, man, the police got the phone. Now he panics. He panics. But he understands. He's thinking in his mind, okay, this is legit. The phone must not have been on because I got a write up for this, a write up for that. But he's thinking, Mississippi going to take the charge. <laughs> Mississippi ain't taking no charge. Mississippi looking at it like, shoot, he been in the hole all this time and I've been out here and all this time and and uh, he been dogging me out and, and treating me like I'm the house boy and all this and that. He on his own. And that's how it usually goes. That's how it usually goes. Now, Mississippi understanding the business, too. He understanding the business. He's seeing how Brunel, they on the hunt. They know G-Money was getting money. So what Mississippi do, he get all the little dope. Because he ain't interested in selling no dope like that. You know what I'm saying? His family takes care of him. His mom sends him money. But... The little dope that, you know what I'm saying, that G-Money was giving him, it was beneficial to some extent, but he decided, look here, I'm going to take all of the stuff that G-Money had, I'm going to give it to his brothers. He know they're not going to give it to him, but it's going to buy him some admiration and a little respect from them, even though they cut though. He know they're not going to send it over. So he tell, he said, man, I need to talk to y'all. I'm hearing that G-Money not going to get out of the hole. And he left some stuff, and I need to give that to y'all. Let y'all take it. So folks are like, oh, what, what, what is it? What is it? So he tell them he has some dope. They said, like, oh, let me get that. And then they were telling him, look, because it's three of them that he, he, he handed it over to. They told him, look, don't say nothing about this to nobody else but us. He know what that means. They not finna tear, tell nobody this top ranking. They not finna give it and send it over to Mississippi. You feel me? They hand it. They hand it to him. They hand it to him. Mississippi get it to him. Knowing that they not finna send it over to G-Money. Knowing that G-Money would not be getting not one per con of that. But now, Burnham looking at him like he's straight. He's solid. But then they finna cross their own brother not send nothing over there. Because they understand how it goes and he might not be getting out of the hole anyway. It don't matter. So check this out. G Money, he panicked. He went on to write a letter and put the letter in the mail the regular way because he's saying, he said, man, my gal ain't never not wrote me in the five years we've been together. So he put a letter in the mail and sent it to her, right? She got it in her head what Mississippi said, so she writes Mississippi back. 
and she telling in the letter she telling G Money, you know what I'm saying, what she been told and what she's doing and all this. But she writing it scripted, coded. You feel what I'm saying? Like he taught her. And Mississippi understand what she's saying because he's the one that told her to take herself off the visitation list, change the phone numbers, all this and that, right? So he understanding what she's saying in this letter, right? And the letter never makes itself makes its way over to G Money. But he writes her back. And he tells her, he says, look, from here on out, if he's talking as if he's G Money. From here on out, if I write you, you know what I'm saying? When I write you, you send that letter back to Mississippi. He, I trust him. He's my brother. He's going to do this and he's going to do that. Blah, 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 this, 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 and that. And then I have him respond for me. Don't even bother writing me. Don't even worry about doing that. So they doing that. So he write that letter back and Mississippi sends it to his gal and she excited. So then Mississippi call her at the new number and now they're talking. She's panicking. She's upset. Now she still love her dude though. She still love her dude. So Mississippi, he's starting to see, okay, it's about to go down. We got to make sure that G Money don't hit this compound no more. Now, the warden them are already trying to figure out what to do with him because they think his life in danger by this bogus letter Mississippi done already sent down there anonymously. So Mississippi, he writes a letter. First, he tells her over the phone, he said, look, I got something I need to tell you. He telling me to tell you this and I don't want to tell you. So she's like, what is it? And he's like, I really wish he would write you on his own. I don't want to get in this. He's trying to be the reluctant friend to G Money, but he don't want her to feel like he don't have her best interest at heart. So she's like, tell me what's going on. And he tells her, I said, look, he wants me to write this other girl that he's been talking to because he knows that you're not going to do certain things because, you know, he told me to tell you to get off the list and all these other types of things so that you won't get caught up, but he don't care nothing about this other girl. And I just don't feel comfortable writing her and telling her this. You know what I'm saying? He said, because I think you deserve better than this. She fall for it. She fall for it. And now she's upset. She's hurt. She's hurt and she's crying. Mississippi said, well, what do you want me to do? And she said, what's the girl's name? And he give it a girl name because it is actually another female in the mix. He gives it a girl name. And he, she asked, she said, do you have a phone number on it? And he was like, no. Nah. There's some numbers in the phone, though, but I ain't really just paid attention to none of that. She said, uh, well, look, pull the numbers up and let's just go through them. Now he know he got her because she wants to talk to this gal herself. They go through the numbers together. She call them one at a time. Bam. Hit the gap. They call her. They telling her that, you know, Mississippi talking to her first saying that, you know, bro wanted me to call now. Bro, gal listening on the trade piece. Bro wanted me to call you and let you know to do this and do that because he needs you to take care of this and take care of that right now. Bro's gal listening. She getting pissed. And then after a couple of minutes, she couldn't take it no more. She just chimed in. She said, and who are you to him? And she said, who is this? And she said, yeah, I'm G Money's girlfriend. And then back and forth they go. Now keep in mind, G Money in the hole. He can't call. He can't call. And he don't want to risk writing unless he sent it out. But now he he had got desperate and sent that one letter straight to her. But now it's everything's gonna be written through Mississippi. So they end up getting off the phone. They calling each other out their name. Y'all know what I'm saying. Imagine what they would be saying to each other. They get off the phone. Now, Mississippi tell her he got to get off the phone, but he got to do damage control. He gets off the phone with G Money Gal, and then he called the second gal, and he called her back. He said, look, I ain't even want to do that. She said, who are you? I, he told her, he said, my name is Mississippi, right? I'm G Money Seller, right? G Money in the home. She's like, why? She totally forget about the argument that she just had with G Money's gal. And she and, uh, she said, why is he in the hole? And then he dropped some same stuff on her, telling her that Mississippi... I mean, the G money in the hole because he got caught up in an investigation by trying to get some stuff in the penitentiary. Now he's in the hole and they don't know what they're going to do with it. And she's like, she's one of these females. She's strictly about her paper. She don't really care who she deal with. And it's a lot of women like that. You know what I'm saying? It's in the, they get with these guys in the penitentiary. They don't care who they with. They just want to make sure they keep getting their bread. And maybe every now and then have a little sex talk over the phone, whatever the case may be. But it is what it is. 
She was like, oh, okay, well, let me know what's going on with him. You keep me up. You can call me anytime. She let him know that. She let him know all that. So he takes advantage of that. Now he's taking the place of G-Money. Now he's calling G-Money's gal and the second gal. Calling both of them and talking to them. But he know that eventually G-Money going to get out of the hole, whether he get out of the hole on that compound or another compound. So he figure out a way. He got to cross him all the way out. I mean, when I say cross him all the way out, he got to cross him all the way out. He got to make sure that G-Money don't get put in a position so he can find out what done happened. He can't do that. But he got to make sure that it's rock solid because he know if it backfire, he hit. If it backfire, he hit. So <laughs> check this out. I'm going to let you know what he does to make sure that G-Money, whenever he does get out of the hole, can't get back in rotation with now one of these girls, right? Not for a while anyway. <laughs> you feel me? So tune in to the next episode. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.